Hey everybody, my name is Lisa and I'm the Crafty Goddess. Hello and welcome! I know I promised some videos for seasonal themed crafty items uh, and I did have them planned but my plans were waylaid as it were. Uh, my darling husband gifted me with a really cool storage module to put all my yarn together um, in a bit more of a presentable fashion than say storage units or storage containers, uh, shelving units, that sort of thing. It is a shelving unit. It's really cool. Um, we kind of have this joke that it looks like, you know, one of the world's crummiest yarn stores. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it looks really fantastic and I will show it in a future video, uh, possibly another one filmed this week, but, uh, I do apologize. Uh, whoever said that the road to hell is paved with the best of intentions was totally spot on. Um, it's not hell per se. It's just, uh, in the process of assembling this new shelving unit and putting it together and rearranging everything. The whole office got rearranged. <laughs> we rearranged all the furniture and cleared out a bunch of clutter and reorganized, reshelled, whatever. So yeah, uh, my apologies, but it is Wednesday, December the 30th, uh, as of the time of filming this video. And since, uh, some of us have a few extra days left before we have to have to go back to work after the winter holidays. So I thought since we're, you know, hunkering down for winter and it's, uh, today it's kind of rainy, it's cold. Um, I haven't checked the temperature here in Southwestern Ontario. It is a little gray and overcast and rainy and blech. Um, but as I said, for those of us who are hunkering down to settle in for the winter months, uh, which around some of these parts, uh, certainly in temperate climates can last till about April. <laughs> Yay. Um, it's the perfect time to work on layers, like making warm, comfy layers you want to snuggle with. And so I thought I would put up another tutorial on making another easy shawl incorporating eyelets and uh, increases. Now, I've done a shawl previously with this in mind. Uh, this is a shawl that I've made. I've done this a few times. This is actually a variation of a Laura Chow design her be simple shawl where she would knit certain blocks of rows she would knit some with straight garter stitches just straight knit back and forth and some with the stockingette stitch where you knit one side purl the other um and you can switch it up however you see fit so that's how i did this shawl uh, and i did it with a lion brand yarn that is now discontinued it is called textures the colors that they use for those for the textures line was incredible I cannot remember the name of this offhand, um, but I've also made another one for myself out of this yarn and it was a, I think it was a green, purple, black mix. Um, but yeah, as you can see the basis for this shawl, did I lose the name? Okay. Uh, there is a center spine with, in, uh, increases on either side. So it has that nice V look and then there are eyelets across the top. You can't really see them too well because of the texture of the yarn, which is fine. Um, but yeah, you can do something like this where you do blocks of rows where it's garter stitch and stocking at stitch. You alternate back and forth. Or you can just do straight knit all the way through straight garter stitch. You can knit one side, purl the other. You can do a stocking at stitch. It's up to you. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I think I will just show you basic stocking at stitch where you knit one side, purl the other. I'm not gonna get too far into it. I wanna get you started. Um, Again, there are no specific rules or regulations for this shawl. You can use whatever weight of, sh of yarn that you wish. Uh, for today's purposes, I'm using a worsted weight yarn. Uh, this is Karen Simply Soft. And trust me, it is soft. I think I tried to use this for a different project and that's why it's all wound up in a ball because I changed my mind. So you're going to need, uh, whichever, like I said, whichever weight yarn, I would recommend going up to possibly a bulky weight where it takes size six or six and a half millimeter needles. You could go up to an eight, but the stitch definition and the eyelets, um, may not be as properly defined, may look a little weird. 
that's just my recommendation. You can go as low as lace weight, fingering weight, DK, whichever. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend anything too bulky or chunky anyway. Yeah, bulky yarn, weight, uh, weight of five, it's fine. Um, I personally prefer worsted, but that's just my preference. You, uh, like I said, there's no rules. Um, so you're gonna need that. You're gonna need the appropriate needles. So I believe the Karen Simply Soft takes either a size 4.5 millimeter or a five. So I got my five millimeter needles here and you're gonna need some stitch markers. I made these stitch markers actually. <laughs> I made a whole bunch of stitch markers. Um, I don't know if you can see them too well. There we go. Working from those vantage point is kind of fun actually. Um, yeah, and if anybody's interested in me putting up a tutorial on how to make stitch markers like this, let me know. Sorry, I just realized now that my camera angle is just a little off here. So let me just, there we go. Okay, strengthen that. Sorry, my apologies. I just, I, I film these as I go and then I look down and go, oh, the angle is a little weird, isn't it? Okay. So, um, yeah, if anybody's interested in me doing a stitch marker tutorial, drop a, drop a comment down below and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. So to get started, um, now how much weight are you going to need? Uh, as much weight as you think you will need for a shawl. If you're using uh, 50 gram balls, I would recommend at least four or five. It also depends on how big you like your shawls as well. This is obviously going to be a triangle shawl because it's going to work its way out. Like it's going to be flat across the top and then it'd be at the bottom. So it's however big you want your shawl. If you want it to wrap right around your shoulders or just a shoulder warmer, um, I recommend using, I think this shawl, the Lion Brand Text uh, Textures Yarn. I actually just happen to have some here with me. Oh, the colorway for this, by the way, is called Ocean Waves. These were, and if you can hear bag rustling, that means I've actually got some left over. Uh, they were three ounce balls or 85 grams. I use, I believe about four or five of them. So I'm gonna say, yeah, about at least 15 ounces of yarn if you want a decent size shawl. Uh, and if you want fringe, tack another ball on top of that because you're going to need it. I, I do love my fringe. I did start fringing this shawl. I haven't obviously finished it yet. <laughs> but I do love a good fringe shawl. Uh, and somewhere along the way, I lost... No, I didn't lose it. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, knit it however long that you wish. I cast on my little slip knot here. Now for intent, for all intents and purposes of this uh, tutorial, I'm going to cast on five stitches. Oh, this is the beauty part of using needles that are long. <laughs> Everything's going to be hitting everything else. So I use the cable cast on method. You can use whatever cast on method you wish. And yeah you can use the long tail cast on you can do you can use whatever you're comfortable with again no rules so here comes the fun part if you need now i usually put stitch markers just to, to mark the center stitch so that it tells me i have to do increases on both sides um, but i'm also doing increases at the beginning and end of every row if you think you need to mark them with stitch markers by all means uh, but after a while, it will become self-evident. Okay, come on, focus. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just actually shimmy this up here a little bit. There we go. Yay. All right. Again, so sorry for the adjustments. So you're going to knit into your first stitch. And like I said, if necessary, if you need to put a, a stitch marker to remind you where... The increase, well, it's not really an increase, it's a yarn over. The yarn overs act as increases for all intents and purposes, I know. So you're gonna do the yarn over. Knit your second stitch. Yarn over right before the center stitch. So you got five stitches. You're about to approach stitch number three. You're gonna do a yarn over before you hit that. Like I said, I put the stitch marker down there so it tells me what the center stitch is. Knit the center stitch. 
place your other yarn marker, yarn over, come on focus, and before you finish off the row, you're going to do another yarn over. Now I know this is different than how we, well it's, it's similar to how we did the center stitch. You're going to yarn over, then put your stitch marker, come on cooperate, and then you knit. Ah. So it looks like there's a lot going on at first flush. Um, but like I said, I only use stitch markers for the center stitch because I'm used to doing this pattern by now where I can tell where to do on the beginning and the end of, <clears throat> excuse me, of the rows. If you need them at the beginning, that's fine. Nobody's going to critique you and nobody should critique you. There are no rules. As my friend said, there are no rules. Um, so if you choose to do a stocking at stitch, all you're going to do on the quote wrong side is you're just going to purl all the rows, keep this on camera. And as you come up to the stitch markers, you just shift them over, but make sure they're facing the other way when you, when you shimmy them over. Cause if you have them this way and then you try to knit, like if you have it facing this way and then you try and knit around it, good luck fishing that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> make sure they're facing the other way unless you have like just those plain round stitch markers in which case that's awesome then you don't have to worry about flipping them around make sure they are accommodated properly so yeah so we've already got two rows and you just, you don't even need to number the stitches. You just need to remember to put yarn overs uh, after the first stitch, before the center stitch, after the center stitch, and then before the end stitch. I'll do it again a couple times just because, hey, I like knitting. So we're going to go into your first stitch. Slide that stitch marker over. Do the yarn over after. On this half of the, the uh, pattern, you're going to do your yarn overs after you slide your, or yeah, <laughs> before you slide the stitch and after. And we're gonna knit to, you're gonna knit to the center stitch. Before you slide this stitch marker over from the center stitch, yarn over, slide that bad baby over, just knit the center stitch as is. Sorry, I keep shimming all over the place. I need to get a better chair so it doesn't slide all over the place. Uh, slide the other stitch marker that signifies your center stitch. Then do the yarn over. Knit to your second last stitch. There's a stitch marker there. Don't move it yet because you need to do another yarn over. Then you can move that bad boy over. Knit the last stitch. Um, and as I get, and as again, sorry, I haven't had any coffee today, so my verbal communication skills are a little rusty. <laughs> Second row, and you're just going to slide these over. Knitting the wrong side, if you're doing it the stock stocking at stitch style where you just purl, the stitches on the other side you don't have to worry about any yarn overs you just knit them or sorry you purl them my apologies you're not doing any increases or decreases or anything on the wrong side you're just continuing the pattern as is making sure the stitch markers know their place holy cow Sorry, it's like way up here, isn't it? My <laughs> but if you're like me and you're at my age where uh, bifocals are now a necessity, you might need, <laughs> you may need the extra vantage point. Um, now, as you can see, there are some eyelets happening along the top here. Now, as you knit further, you're going to notice that this is going to droop a little bit. It's going to come down. Don't let that fool you. That's not the V shape of the shawl. 
that's actually the top of the shawl it's just puckering because you're knitting all this fabric the actual bottom of the shawl is what's on the needles so when you cast it off it's going to have this nice v shape and it's going to look gorgeous let's do one more row here so we're knitting the first stitch of the right side where you're knitting if it again if you're doing a garter stitch, you may want to put, say, a stitch marker or some sort of safety pin or something to signify the right side of your fabric. So then that way you don't get it mixed up with the other side and you're doing decreases on both sides or none or none sides. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. My language kind of stinks today. And if you're doing the... Um, the modified Be Simple shawl pattern from Laura Chow, which by the way is free. It's on Ravelry. I think I found it originally on Pinterest and then it directed me to Ravelry. Um, she said you can use whatever combination of rows you want. You can do like say four rows, garter stitch, six rows, stocking it, six rows of garter, four rows of stock, back and forth, whichever. The combinations are completely up to you. So right side fabric. Knitting this one stitch, knitting the very first stitch, slide that marker over, knit one, knitting to the center stitch marker on the right hand side, la la la, just knitting, having fun. Come to the center stitch, stitch marker on the right hand side, we're going to yarn over, slide that stitch marker, knit the center stitch. Slide the other stitch marker, yarn over, knit to the end of the row. It's a, I was going to say, it's a lovely day. I personally don't mind it being gray and overcast. It's a perfect day to drink my weight in tea and knit. So before you hit that last stitch and last stitch marker, you do another yarn over, slide the stitch marker, knit the last stitch. I need a better camera angle. And you're just going to purl again. If you're doing stocking at stitches, the wrong side of the fabric has nothing going on except just plowing through that row. No increases, just sliding the stitch markers. If I mention how much Karen Simply Soft yarn is so snugly and soft, it's not a ploy on a name. It's it's the genuine article. This yarn is super soft. I've used it for I'm trying to think now. I've used it for wrist warmers. I've used it for hats. I've used it for scarves, blankets. It's really pretty, and this shade is gorgeous too. I'm I'm a sucker for like lilacs and lavenders and that sort of thing. Get over there. And that's all you're going to do. That's basically all you're going to do. If you see, like I said, you can see that not only are we having an eyelet pattern emerge along the top of the shawl, but you're starting to see that there is a center stitch definition happening. Um, if you like that that type of look, which I do, I'm a total sucker for that sort of thing. Um, it almost looks like a spine going straight down. You know what I'm saying? But that's it. That's all you're going to do. Um, and also, I, I cannot express enough that if you are making this as a gift for someone else, make sure that they do not have any fiber sensitivities. Uh, as pretty as wool is and as lovely the as the Stitch Definition is for wool-based yarns, make sure they're not allergic to it. <laughs> um, that's why most of my shawls are made from acrylic yarns. So that way they're also machine washable and dryable and they are pretty comfy on your skin. So that is it. You are going to continue in this fashion until you've got just enough yarn left to cast off your stitches. Then you're going to cast off and away you go. Um, is blocking necessary? No. I wouldn't say so. If you want to block it, block it, but I personally don't. Um, the only time I've ever blocked anything is if it had a lace pattern. This is not a lace pattern. This is as easy as it gets. And it is easy. It's something you can work on while you're hunkering down, trying to avoid the cold if you can. Um, if you need a reprieve from a hard day at work, it's, it's a perfect 
pattern to just unplug. Once you get the pattern down pat and you just keep going with those two rows back and forth, you don't even have to think about it. You'll just come to like the first and last stitch and go, oh, okay, I got to do yarn over there. And you'll see like the middle stitch. Although I would recommend keeping the stitch markers in the middle to designate the center stitch just to be on the safe side because I've not done that and I've gone on autopilot completely where I didn't do the yarn overs and it looked bad. <laughs> it wasn't quite visually uh, appealing but those are just my tips and tricks and words of advice but that's it. That's uh, that's all I can throw you. If anybody has any further questions or comments or anything please drop them down below in the comments section. Uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate all the positive feedback. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please jump on, uh, hit the notification bell, sign up for subscribing. I've noticed the past couple of days that the subscriber count has been increasing steadily and it's been awesome. I'm almost at 100 subscribers now. I wanted to do a draw for Christmas Eve if I hit 100 subscribers then. I did not. But that's okay. It looks like I'm going to hit it now. So if I get 100 subscribers, today is December 30th. If I get them before tomorrow, December 31st, I'm doing a giveaway. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Thank you so much for joining me on another, another shawl pattern. Maybe I'll do something other than shawl tutorials someday. We'll see. Um, but for now, again, I, I cannot express my gratitude enough for everybody tuning in, joining in, sending me likes and comments, sending the love. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Keep making cool stuff. Stay safe. And uh, yeah, let's do this again sometime. This was fun. All right. Take care. Bye.